The book of Nehemiah. I used to call it Nehemiah when I first got saved. Nehemiah chapter number 8. Now it's tonight on how to have a camp meeting. Nehemiah chapter number 8. By the way, we are having a fall festival for our kids, church kids, on October 31st. On the, the, when, the, when the world's having Halloween, we're going to have a fall festival for our kids here at the church, give them something to do over at the new church. And we're going to have that our thing out here. They can jump and turn flips and games and basketball and, and candy and fellowship. So you don't have to argue with them about going trick-or-treating and all that stuff. That'll be uh, on uh, on October 31st, probably around 6 o'clock, uh, 5.30 to 6, somewhere along in there. Uh, so uh, plan doing that, ladies. That'll give you uh, an alternative to Halloween. Amen. The book of Nehemiah, chapter number 8. All right, here we go. This Scripture tells us what we've got to do to have a great camp meeting. And I'm just going to go over it a little while tonight and prepare for Wednesday night. I, this is the only time of year I get to sit down and listen to preaching like I do uh, every night. So I'm looking forward to it. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1. Look what it says. And all the people gathered themselves together. There could stop and preach on that right there. All the people. Not half of them. Not two thirds of them. You say, well, I'm going to try to make it one. No, it says all the people get themselves together. One man said, our church is 100% willing. 90% or 5, 10% is willing to do the work and 90% is willing to let them. And that's the way it is in most churches. All the people gathered themselves together. There's your first thing. As one man. You could have a meeting if you could do that. If everybody gathered together as one man. What the problem with churches is divisions. This one don't like this one. This one's mad at this one. This one's got their feelings hurt with this one. This one thinks we ought to be doing this, and that one thinks we ought to be doing that. They gather together as one man. I, that's why I like the choir. I like to see a choir sing because choirs get up here and they're all singing the same thing. They're all smiling. Thing. Boy, there's power in that. There's power in choir. And because they gather as one man. Now, before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book. Yeah. Bring the book. Right, Isn't that a blessing? Yeah. I mean, all these messages that I could preach. Bring the book, brother. Bring the book. It's count meeting time. Bring the book. And I ain't talking about the Sears catalog. And I ain't talking about uh, National Point Geographic. And I'm not talking about. Uh, I'm not talking about none of those things. I'm talking about the book. The book. That made all this all this possible. Bring the book. I was preaching the other night in revival, and a big singing group got up, and boy, they were spiritual. And they had equipment in there, big old speakers, and they had keyboard stuff, and they had push a button and every song play. And they all sit down. They sh- they was all they say, "Come on now," you know how they do, slap their microphone. They was doing that, you know, like that. And I got up and said, "Open your Bibles," and they just sat there and looked at me. Didn't even bring their Bible. Well, it kind of hit me the wrong way, and I probably shouldn't have said this. But I said, somebody don't have a Bible beside you, pinch them. And, uh, boy, they just looked at me. And they didn't smile the rest of the time, hardly. But, I mean, my goodness, if you can lug as much equipment in there as Iron Maiden's got, you ought to be able to carry a, little, a Bible under your arm. Say amen! Amen! By the way, we need to work on our amens too. Y'all gonna embarrass me. These preachers are gonna say, Boy, the Danny pastors of church and nobody says amen. We need to pick you know, this morning Yins left me all in here by myself. All of our workers was out there and I was in here like I felt like Daniel in the lion's den. I mean, we need some amens. We need especially from you men. Some amens once in a while. Some amen. And it wouldn't hurt if you ladies say it once in a while too. Amen. Throw up your little bony hand and say, Woo! Glory or something like that. Take a running fit. I tell him, boy, who's going to be the first to take a run the bases? Amen. I'm not just take off your <laughs> and run the bases. Amen. You say, you aren't in the Spirit. You ain't in the Spirit sitting there messing with your cell phone either. That's right. What are you worried about being in the Spirit for? You ain't worried about being in the Spirit. Amen. I ought to just haul off one time and just for sheer principle's sake, throw up our hands and say, praise God. Good to be saved, ain't it? Yeah. 
Amen. That's right. That's right. You say, you're trying to pump it up. Absolutely, I sure am. Guilty. Guilty. I'm agging it on. I'm pumping it up. Brother, we ought to, we ought to, we ought to do that. But look what else they did. They brought the book of the, they brought the book, brother. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding. And where's the rest of them at? In the nursery. That's what it says. Men and women and everybody that could understand. The rest of them's in the nursery. You're not supposed to sit here. I think women are deaf, some of them. They're sitting there like that. The baby's going, ah, 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 ah. I mean, how can you stand that? I honestly would put duct tape over one of mine's mouth if I did that. And just sitting there like, trying to get a blessing. And everybody in the whole church staring at them. I mean, I know kids cry once in a while, but good night, folks. Them that had understanding was in there. Now, look at verse number 3. And he read therein before the street. That was before the water gate. From the morning until midday. That's where you figure out to get out of church at 12 o'clock. But they missed something. That's when he just got through reading his Scripture. <laughs> That's what he said. They said, well, he read to midday. got out at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock is midday. But it said he read... From morning till midday. What if I read the Bible from 10 o'clock till 12 o'clock? And at 12 o'clock I said, Now we may we have Lord's blessings upon the reading of His Word. <laughs> You'd say, Lord, we ain't getting out. No! Nope! And now I'm bringing the message. On good night. On 195 reasons. Why? You need, like, that, like that boy I let preach up there at New Manning. Remember that time I let Greg Flowers preach? Does anybody know that? I announced Greg always wanted to preach. His old boy went to up there. He always wanted to preach. And I said, I'm going to let you preach, Greg. So I let him preach one Wednesday night and I was gone somewhere. And he got up and he said, Friends, my friends, I'm going to preach on 32 reasons why you shouldn't go to hell. Everybody went, 32 reasons, Lord. We're going to be here for four hours. 32 reasons. Uh, but, but listen, you know what? Well, I'm not going to do that. But listen, that's what he did. He read till midday. He read till midday. Look at verse uh, uh, 3. And he read from morning to midday before the men and women. Look at verse 4. And Ezra the scribe, this is the preacher, stood up on the pulpit. Up on the pulpit. Lord have mercy. On the pulpit. I'm, I'm going to try that tonight. I have to put one foot right here. I've done that before. Lots of times. Man, the man stood. You think I'm crazy? He stood up on the pulpit. Don't you think I'm wild? Billy Sunday used to take, when he preached, he used to take chairs and throw them. And break them. Broke chairs in his meeting. And they said, he wrote his notes in great big letters like that right there. And somebody said, Preacher, why do you use such big notes? He said, so I can read them when I run past the pulpit. Amen, brother. And I'm telling you, that's the last generation of preachers. Lord, this modern generation of preachers, they just about make you sick. They become philosophers. And, and all they talk about is how to cope, you know, and how to make it through your trouble, trouble your troubles and trials. Your problem trials and all kind of junk like that, brother. You know what? I, I heard one just this week and he's talking about, you know, and, and we need to cope and we need to do this and we need to do that. And they sound like some kind of psychiatrist or something. Brother, nothing will take the preacher, just some old leather lung, redneck preacher, opening up a King James Bible and just shouting the corn. Amen. And I'll talk about that in a minute. He stood up on the pulpit and, and he said, beside him said Mattatai and Shemai and a whole bunch of fellas. Look at verse 6. And uh, look there, he opened the book in verse 5, and in the sight of the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. That's where you get people stand for the reading of the Word of God. Verse 6, And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, not just the fanatic on the front row, not just the boys that didn't have no sense, thought they was called preach. All the people said, Amen. Amen. And lifted up their hands and they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. That's the way they worship. That's the way you have a camp meeting. They, every one of them, let's, let's every one of them try it tonight. Every one of them. If I see your mouth not open, 
when, when I say this right here, I'm going to pray for you. On the count of three, it said, everybody there said amen. And they said it twice. Amen. Amen. And lifting up their hands and worship the Lord with their faces to the ground. Somebody said, boy, somebody said amen at my church. Everybody have a heart attack. That shows how far your church has got away from the Bible. All the people said amen. It's proper. It's right. Somebody said, well, I'm not going to go down there at them churches where people hollering amen. Well, you just showed how ignorant you are of the Bible. In the Bible, they all said amen. Now, here, ready. On the count of three. One, two, three. I didn't see one person. Now, I'm going to try it again because I didn't get to look at everybody. There, all right, let's try it again. On the count of three. One, two, three. Man, you let, you let Zoom Zoom get up here uh, for Friday night and get up here and say, Good to be here, ain't it? That's the way he talks. And all of y'all say, Amen! Like that man, he'll preach himself to death. I mean, that's right. You let Brother Frank here, one of them, get up here and say, All right, boy, it's good to be in the Lord's house tonight. Open your Bible and every one of y'all say, One, two, three. Amen! Lord have mercy. How come you don't do that when I preach? My feelings are hurt. I mean, I mean, I try. I know I ain't as good as them guys, but I try, brother. Listen, you ought to just say Amen to the truth. Not just say Amen when you feel it. Not when you feel goosebumps going up your back. But say Amen to the truth. Sometimes I sit up here and watch when somebody's preaching and some of y'all look like you're just in a daze. You're just... And you're thinking about, I don't know what, work tomorrow, whatever. Man, get into it, people. Get into it. Get into it. And I had to fuss at some of you to run you in from out there this morning. I don't understand why somebody would take an hour to get ready, drive 30 minutes to church, and stand outside during the service. That absolutely... No comprehende, brother. I mean, that just makes no sense to me whatsoever. Get in here and listen to what's going on in the house of God. Why would you drive 30 minutes or 40 minutes or an hour or whatever you drive and sit in the parking lot and smoke cigarettes while somebody's in here preaching? That absolutely is makes no sense to me. Can I say retarded tonight? That sounds bad. Hey, something wrong with your brain, brother. Amen? Something wrong with your brain. Amen. That's like saying, boy, we're all going to steakhouse Friday night and everybody's in there eating and you're standing around out here talking. You bet you wouldn't do that steakhouse. No, sir. You'd be fighting to get in there first in line. But anyway, if I don't get through reading this Scripture, I'm never going to get to the, to the sermon tonight. They all worship the Lord. Verse 7, they all stood in their place. Look at verse 10. Look at the bottom of verse 10. Neither be you sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Look at verse 12. They had great mirth. That's what we want to have Friday night and Saturday night. Great mirth. Because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. Amen. Now it's a preacher's job to make you understand the Bible. That's a preacher's job. I heard, I heard a lot of people, and please don't get me wrong, I'm not being critical. Really, I'm jealous of them guys that can quote some of the Scripture. Uh, I've heard somebody say, He's a walking Bible. All he does is quote Scripture. Well, I'm jealous because I, I mean... I know a lot of guys like that that knows the Bible a lot better than I do. But uh, that's not just a preacher's job to get up here and quote Scripture. I've heard people say, boy, have you ever heard so-and-so? All he does is quote Scripture. I never heard Deborah Parker. Deborah, knows y'all remember Deborah. She had one of these dry sense of humor. And boy, she'd say something, it just cut you to the bone, man, uh, when she wanted to. And somebody told her, said, Deborah, you've got to go hear this preacher. This preacher, all he does is quote Scripture. And she said, well, I can read the Bible. <laughs> and that's right. You can't. But see, it's our job to make you understand the sense of it. It's a preacher's job to take the Scripture and then make you understand the sense. You say, oh, I've read that. That's what that means. That's what it means. It's our job to exposit, if you want to use that word, the Bible. Expository preaching means I take some Scripture and by the time I get through with it, you say, oh, yeah, that's what the Lord meant. That's what He's talking about. That's what Ezra the scribe did here. Now, notice what else he did. Now, I'll just say a few things and I'll be through. Look at verse number 17. It said there was very great gladness. Look at verse number 18. They kept the feast. They had a Holy Ghost camp meeting. Can you hear that ringing, brother? What else can? Turn it down just a little bit. How to have a camp meeting. Now, he's had several things here tonight. And the first thing I want to say, uh, I'm going to be real short now since I talked long in the introduction. You know what they had? They had praying. If you're going to have a camp meeting, you're going to have some praying. 
We are not going to have no old-fashioned Holy Ghost. Heaven came down and glory filled our soul camp meeting unless somebody gets a burden and pray. Before we leave tonight, I'm going to call everybody to the altar and we're going to get around this altar and we're going to pray. I hope you've been praying. We had our meeting up here last night. We just come through a seven-day fast. Starting today's the last day for you that wasn't here last Sunday night. A seven-day fast for the camp meet. I hope you kept your fast. And but I, I did, and the Lord blessed me. And here's the way I've been praying. I told them last night to pray for the camp meet. Pray, pray backwards. Start out with Sunday night and pray backwards. So when you go home tonight, spend uh, some time tomorrow in prayer. We're not going to have a great camp meet if we don't. It ain't going to happen. So I'm going to ask everybody here that will. Get that TV program you like. Give up that, I don't know, whatever. Uh, uh, take about an hour tomorrow and an hour Tuesday. You can do other things for an hour, right? And take that time and pray for the camp meeting. And here's the way you want to do it. You want to pray for the camp meeting, get you, get you one of them flyers, you know, like we got laying around here, and you, and you start backwards like this. Sunday night. Next Sunday night. Lord bless. I ain't told you I was going to be here Sunday night. His name's Timmy Hargrave. And so you better really pray. Brother Timmy's going to be here on Saturday night. Amen. Uh, the wild man from Gastonia. So you pray. Oh, God bless Timmy. God give him the message. You know why I like to Timmy? Oh, Timmy's for real. He really is. I mean, he's got a great testimony. He, he, he's different. But he's real. And I invite people here because I believe every one of them is real. And old Timmy say, God put it on him. God put it on him like never before. God bless him. God fill Timmy with his spirit. And, and the shepherd choir and all of them will be with us. Brother Tommy and all of them. Pray for the shepherd choir. God get them here. God get them here. Please, God. Let them sing, God, for your glory. Oh, God, please, God. Please, God, get a hold of the shepherd choir. Anoint them with power. And pray for Sunday night. Then back up to Sunday morning. Pray for Sunday morning. I'll probably be preaching in the morning service. So pray for me. There'll be camp meeting visitors here. There'll be people here from all over. And then back up to Saturday night. The weary family. Brother Chapel. Pray that God will put him on. Danny Chapel's another one that's real. I'm telling you what, brother. God done something with that man. I seen Brother Danny preach one time uh, up there in, and, and there was probably uh, half the congregation was on their feet uh, weeping and, and, and wailing to God when he told about his mother uh, getting burned to death out there. And God! And, and the devil's fault, Brother Danny. But he's real. He's real. And he'll be here Saturday night. And Brother John Mitchell, what can I say? For time would fail me to tell of all these men. And brother, you think about all I'm glad we're going to be blessed in the presence of these men of God. And pray for Brother Mitchell. And then back up to Friday Friday night. Uh, and forget that Shoney's that we all go to on Friday night. Don't even think about that. I mean, you've been fasting and praying and we all go to Shoney's or Abley's or whatever they call it now. But don't even think about that. I think about Friday night and the Holy Ghost coming down. Brother Brandon Bruce is going to be here uh, with his singers from Alabama. And that, that, you know, some of y'all that went down there with me, you know what's coming. Uh, that girl's going to sing a song called The Blood Will Never Lose Its Power. And you ain't never heard that song sung no better than what this girl's going to be here Friday night. Oh, God, put it on her. Let it be real. Oh, God, put it on her. A safe trip here. Then back up to Friday morning and pray for Friday morning services. Zoom, zoom. All them guys will be here. I, I, Randy Steely and uh, uh, Brother Jack Gouge, the preacher that just about got thrown out of his church here a few weeks ago. He'll be with us in them morning services. Uh, and Brother brother Kivett and, oh Lord, I don't know who all. Got a big list at home. Uh, brother... Uh, uh, Howard E. Step, that's going to sit right here beside Brother Andy and beat him to death. I mean, he'll slap you. He'll slap you while somebody's preaching. Ain't that good? I like that. He'll be here. Y'all going to get a blessing out of Brother Howard. He's 70 something years old. 70 something years old and had a heart attack. And honestly, he's, he's as lively as I am. I mean, he jumps. He runs. He screams. He throws his arms. Amen. And pray for him. Pray for Thursday night, Thursday morning. Oh, Wednesday night, Wednesday morning. That's the way to pray tomorrow. Pray, pray it back. Start it, start it uh, Sunday night and work your way back. And then we'll be ready when Wednesday night comes. That's fresh on your mind, see? And that's what it is. I got a little place up in the woods where I go. Where, I, where the God touched me years and years and years ago. Some of you heard me tell about it. I got a place up in the woods above my house. And every evening before
more camp meetings. I go up there. I went up there, uh, let's see, Friday evening. Went up there Friday evening up in the woods where God touched my life many, many years ago. And I'll get down and I'll pray for every service. And, and I'll pray. Find you a place like that. Uh, one of the ladies, Miss Parker, one of them talked about entering into your closet. Literally. Get in there and shut the door. And pray to thy Father which seeth in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And I'm telling you, you can, I can tell when I've been in a church that's been praying. Because heaven comes down and glory fills our soul. But I'll tell you tonight, I want to see it at shining light, don't you? I want to see it. God's able to do it. God's able to do it. God's able to pour out His Spirit upon His people. God's able to bless this old bunch of rednecks like us. I mean, God's still real. Heaven's still real. Jesus is still real. Let's pray with all our power until the Holy Ghost comes down and does the work. Amen. Pray, man. Pray. We'll be having prayer meeting every night out in the tent before the service. About 15 minutes till 7. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday out here in the tent. For all you men that will come and join us. Ladies, if y'all want to gather back here somewhere, that would be wonderful. You know how to have a camp meeting? They had a lot of praying. Amen. But let me say something else they had. You know what they had? They had preaching. You ain't going to have no camp meeting without preaching. We're not coming to have singing. We're going to have some singing. That ain't why we're coming. And I'm going to tell you something, brother. Listen, do y'all mind if I cut my toenails? Uh, listen, and I'm going to tell you something, brother. We are, we are going to have some preaching. Amen. I'm telling you what, brother. I'm telling we got some old leather lung rag preachers coming. I ain't invited not one preacher that's going to come up here and sound like a philosopher. I wouldn't want one coming. We got enough philosophizing going on. We need some preaching. You know what? And please God by the foolishness of preaching. Preaching is what will get the job done. Preaching is what will help our young people. You ain't going to have your kids in nothing any greater. They ain't going to be nothing no better in this part of the country than Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. What's going on right here at Shining Light Baptist Church? Don't miss a service. Don't let your kids miss a service. Who we on that homework, brother? That's a Greek word for heck with. And I'm going to tell you something, brother. Uh, don't worry about it. Let the Lord come first. Let the Lord come first. I'm serious. I mean that. And I'll stand in front of God and not be ashamed for what I just said. The preaching of the Word of God. What will help our kids? Lord, they go to school nine months a year. It ain't going to hurt them sitting here listening to some preaching a few nights. Amen? I'm telling you, we need some preaching. I mean, old-fashioned. Uh, King James. Bible-believing. Preaching. Amen? I like old country preachers. I like them. I'm telling you what, brother. I, I like preaching. Old brother Howard, he don't sound like he's ever went to school, but he'll preach to you. I'm telling you, brother Mitchell, he'll preach. You know, Frankie, he'll preach, brother. They'll prim boys to preach a paint off the wall. That's what we need. That's what you, you got to have that to have a camp meeting. You can't have a camp meeting with some philosopher standing up here trying to get in your head and give you counsel. That's not the, I, I, I sound like some kind of psychiatrist. We need some preaching. We need some preaching. Preaching will get the job done. You old time preachers, they didn't have all their words just right. They couldn't pronounce everything just exactly the way it should. They may not have always been doctrinally correct, but they had something this modern generation ain't got. I listen to some of these guys on these FM stations. I mean, you know, it's all right. I mean, keep you from starving to death, but you think, God. I mean, it don't, it don't get down in you. Preaching's what gets down inside you. Makes you want to get right with God. Makes you want to quit your sinning. Amen? Them old preachers, one of them old preachers, they, they didn't say it right, you know. One of them got up and he talked about the oyster man. He said the Lord was a hardened oyster man. You know, the oyster, you know, for you that don't know. Uh, there in the Bible, one of them talked about the partridge David. He said, now them old partridges, they was great men. Abraham was a partridge. And Isaac was a partridge. For you that don't know no better, it's patriarch. A great father of the faith. We had one come up there one time. Old Brady Atkins. Y'all remember Brady? And old Brady, he preached off the sermon ever was about the Lord being laid in the tomb. And he called it that sculpture. I ain't talking about that sculpture. And he said it's sepulture. And that means, and sepulture means the tomb. But he said it's a sculpture. He said now them sculptures, they're hard to make. He said they had to take hammers and chisel and chisel out them sculptures. And, and shouted and right on, brother. Not a great time. It wasn't a bit of it right, but boy, it was good anyway. Amen. 
Amen. I tell you what, listen, if a man's heart's right, God will look over the few errors he might make in his preaching more than if his, than if his head's all right and his heart ain't hot for God. I tell you something, brother, them old boys, their heart was right with God. One old preacher got up, he said, now we've got to stand. He said, we've got to stand against the willies of the devil. He said, the devil's got all them willies. I'm looking to see who ain't laughing. It's wild, people. Wild. But he talked about them willies of the devil. Uh, you ever heard of that preacher preach about them ewe lambs? Some of you just get up and preach about that little ewe lamb. <laughs> I'm telling you, you got up and preached the whole time. That little ewe lamb, it was pitiful. I tell you, just laugh when everybody else laughs. We won't know how dumb you are about the Bible. It's you lamb. E W E. He called it the ewe. <laughs> The whole time he was up preaching, uh, he said that little ee wee lamb. And you know, I've I've heard preachers get up and preach that it was Isaiah and somebody got swallowed by the whale and the whole time called the man the wrong name and and it was a good message and but you just have to look over stuff like that, man. I mean, we're human, Lord have mercy. You you ever thought about I tell you what some of you people ought to do. You ought to get out and try this sometime. Just what I'm doing right now. Get out in your backyard and scream and holler for 45 minutes and don't say the same thing twice. Don't get your tang tangled up one time. Try it. Get out in your backyard and jump and the Bible says, I'm not like that 45 minutes. Half of you to have a heart attack. I mean, get your heart pumping. It ain't like lifting weights and running. You're screaming the whole same time you're doing that. And I'm telling you what, brother, I, 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 it's a whole lot harder than you think it is. I've been preaching all since I was 19 years old, and I still ain't got it down pat. I'm a long way. I still think, Lord, I can't do this. But it's, it's, it's elusive. About the time you think you got it, it goes over here somewhere. By the time you think you've done good, you fall flat on your face. You ever think you preach a great sermon? You ain't. You're just full of pride. I'm telling you, there's something different about preaching than anything in this world. It's wild, I'm telling you. It's, 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 one, one preacher got up. He said, bless God, you better watch out for them scribes and them Pharisees and them Sadducees. He said, them Sadducees. <laughs> well, that's a good name for them. Amen. One fellow stood up and he said, I'm a suppository preacher. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. I just crawl out the back door or something. They said, <laughs> they said this one preacher, it's expository. That's what it's supposed to be. Well, this guy got up. They said this guy one time, he was preaching his first funeral. They said this one preacher was preaching the first funeral he ever had. And he said he, was, he had his Bible under his arm. And he was down in Florida and it was about 90 degrees on a whole hot, rainy evening. And he had on one of these white Panama khaki colored suits. And he's walking up through there with his little minister's manual, you know, making sure he'd done everything right. And it was raining and mud. And he slipped and fell in the grave. That's true. And he said, can you imagine climbing up out of an old muddy grave with a white suit on? I'd have just, I'd have just, I'd have just crawled on off out there under you know, got behind a tree somewhere or something. They said this preacher, this one preacher said he was baptized one night and he while he was waiting on it, he'd go back here and change clothes and they and they opened the curtains and the preacher was back here with, with, he didn't have nothing on from here up. And he looked at everybody like that and just dove in the baptistry like that. I'm telling you, man, it's something else. You can get caught in some awful predicaments. That's about like the one preacher that left his microphone, this microphone right here, left it on. When he got through, he went to the restroom. You, hey, everybody could hear him in there. <laughs> Gag. No plus. And I thought, oh, Lord. I mean, they could hear everything he was doing and saying. I'm telling you, brother, you ain't going to have no camp meeting without preaching. Amen. Them old preachers, they didn't have it exactly right. But, brother, they, they had the power of God. Amen. They said that one time. They said this one guy. Back when them old women wore them big old hats, church. Women used to wear great big hats, church. Remember that back in the old days? I mean, it's like this, like an umbrella. You could walk under them. Everybody in the family could walk underneath that thing. And they'd wear them. They'd serve them. And the preacher got up and he said, didn't have a big platform. He said, ladies, would you please remove your hats while I preach? And he said, every woman in there took their hat off except one. And she just looked at him like, taking my hat off. He said, ladies, would you please remove your hats? She just sat there and looked at him. I ain't taking my hat off. He said, I appreciate it. Thank you, ladies. I, I was preaching somewhere the other day. 
and I asked all the ladies to take their hat off, and, and every one of them took it off except one. But kind of find out she's bald headed, and that woman just took her hat off and sat down like right there. You know, you don't get stuff like that at seminary. That's a wisdom that comes from God. I like that story. A preacher said one time said somebody was stealing chickens. And somebody was stealing chickens in the little community and he knew something was going on wrong. So he gathered out in the church on Saturday night. He said, now tonight, he said, there's a chicken thief in here. And he said, the Lord is going to reveal who the chicken thief is in just a minute. And he put a big old rock on the pulpit and he said, in just a minute, I'm going to take that rock and I'm going to bust the head of the chicken thief. He said, now, God, boy, he got into preaching. He got in the big way, you know. I mean, he got in the Holy Ghost, you know, and he stopped and he said, and now, the Lord will reveal the chicken thing. And he grabbed that rock like this and ran right back. And one fellow back there ducked like that. Yeah. That's pretty smart, ain't it? Now, you don't learn how to do that going to Bible school. You get stuff like that from the Lord. And that's why I like, that's why I like old fashioned preaching. Preachers can come up with stuff accidentally that'll help you more than a trip to a marriage counselor ever thought about it. Just by accident. I keep thinking of a story. This ain't got nothing to do with my message, but it, my old Johnny Cook told a crazy story. He said, he said one time that he went and had to, somebody called him up and they said, Preacher, so and so died and we want you to preach your funeral. Boy, I sure am sorry to hear that. They said, You know something, preacher? He thought the world you. said, He thought there wasn't nobody in the world like you. I appreciate that. And he said, We want you to sing at his funeral. He said, All right, I'll be there. And uh, so they come. He, the day comes the funeral. He got in there and they said, Well, what what you want to sing? He said, uh, Preacher, he, he wanted you to sing his favorite song. He, he, he just thought there wasn't nobody like you. Would you do it? And old Johnny said, He said, well, all right. He said, I'm going to feel kind of odd doing that, but if that's what the, if that's what somebody wants, and that's what... I, so the funeral comes. Everybody's sitting in there somber, sober, crying, tears running. He gets up there. I mean, he gets up there and says, try to sound like a funeral voice, you know. Jingle bells. Jingle bells. Jingle all the way. And there's some people thought, what is that idiot doing? He sung Jingle Bell! And everybody was going, oh, no, oh, no. And they come up after and they said, no, we, what we meant when they ring them golden bells. <laughs> he made a fool out of himself. You know, when they ring those golden bells for you and me. That's what he wanted to say. He's going to say Jingle Bell. I'm telling you, man, give, give us a break, man. This is harder than you think it is. Amen. They had preaching. They sure did. I mean, preaching will get the job done. You know how to have an old fashioned camp meeting? You gotta have plenty of preaching. I've heard a lot of people say, Boy, you gonna let so and so sing? Gonna let so and so sing? We're gonna have singing, but this is a preaching meeting. This ain't a Saturday night singing. This is a preaching meeting. We're gonna have preaching. Sin cannot, will not ever take the place of the preaching of the Bible. And we're, you know, there's a lot of churches that are built on singing. A lot of I know churches that are built on this famous group and that famous group and that famous group and this and they got to constantly have famous groups and say, I'm not against all them things like that. But listen, you know what you'll have if you have a church like that? You'll have a big old bunch of people don't know what they believe, don't know where they stand, have no convictions or nothing. Listen, that's Shining Light Baptist Church. We may be doing it the hard way, but this church is built on the preaching of this book right here. That's why our little theme, that's why the title of my radio broadcast is Bible Preaching. Bible Preaching will do more for us than anything else ever has done. You can't improve on it. You can't make anything better than it. There is nothing better for your soul than old-fashioned King James Bible preaching. And we're going to have plenty this week. Don't miss a one. Let me say this. The preacher that you want to hear the least is probably the one God gives something that you need to hear the most. He said, well, what night is so-and-so going to be here? Now, somebody told me the other day, well, I want to be sure and be there that night. Or I want to, I'll pick that night. No, 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 no. That ain't what we look at. Preaching supernatural. The preachers, you think, oh, I don't really care much for him. That's the one you need to go hear. The devil's trying to talk you out of it. I listen to preachers all the time that I really care for. You know why? Because God's called them to preach. I want to hear what they got to say. I don't want because preachers they got these little old things about them that annoy you. I hope I don't have stuff like that. If I do, tell me. 
If I do, tell me, really. I mean, I try to make my ties match my shirt. And I try to, you know, I try to at least, you know, have my collar on straight and stuff. But I know some preachers that they got these little things and you can't even listen to them. They think, God, why don't he do? Why don't he? You know, I, you know, they'll preach with, with their collar, with their, like that right there. One preacher we used to have, he had one of these hypocrite ties. They didn't really tie. They just clip on up here. And he would, about two minutes after he started preaching, he'd unclip it and let it hang there. And he preached the rest of his sermon, and the whole time his tie would just flop like that right there. Hi, preacher. I, I don't, don't, let's don't get too personal, but you know some that have little sayings that just, God, say, will you please, if you say it one more time, I'm going to walk out, you know, and you just get on your nerves. Well, you got to learn to look past all that stuff. Look past it. Hackers. Some people don't like hacking preachers. Personally, I do. I know we got people here in church that I just cannot stand to listen to a man hack. Y'all know what hacking preaching is, don't you? I mean, I like it. I like it. As long as it's straight and he's telling the truth, and a man's in it, I like it. Listen, there's people up there in the mountains don't even believe you're called to preach on hack. I mean, the Bible says, ha, you better repent. Ha, and you don't get saved. Ha, you're going to hell. Ha, you know. Uh, one guy said, praise God. I bet he said, praise God, 300 times in his sermon. I heard one guy go on radio one time. He said, "Hey, it's good to be here. Praise God and praise God. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm here. Praise God and praise God. Praise God. I'm glad you're praise God here. Praise God and praise God. I'm glad. Praise God. Praise." And he said, "If you don't get saved, praise God, you're gonna go to hell. Praise God." And I said, "No. You don't say praise God because somebody goes to hell. We're just getting a habit of saying little things like that, and it's a, they say it just to fill in space while they're trying to think, say something. But that's all right. Let it go." And listen to them. Amen. Praise God. That's right. Praise God. That's, that's, that's just vain to babbling. But listen to what the man says. Amen. Jack Howes used to stand up here and say, Open your Bible. <laughs> to Matthew chapter. <laughs> and he had a throat problem. He had a throat problem, brother. And finally the Lord healed him. He quit doing that finally before he died. And there's, there's 10,000 preachers in America. And wasn't nothing wrong with their throat. And they'd get up and say, open your Bibles. Because <clears throat> they thought, Hiles does it. God will bless me if I do it. That ain't, that ain't why God blessed Dr. Hiles. Them boys used to try to copy the record. I'm going to turn around and turn around. A little book of Matthew. You know, and they'd get up and try to act like that. God don't bless Ruckman because of that. He blesses him in spite of it. Do we have any more suggestions? Tell me somebody and I'll be whoever you want me to be. Who? Who? Oh, shut up! Shut up! You know what I'm going to do, bless God. I'm going out this week, rub mud. I'm going to come in here, mud all over my face. Smelling like I ain't had a bath in three days. Both are not pretty. I told them this morning, I, I, I said, girls are not handsome. I can't imagine saying, that, that girl's really handsome. Why would you say a boy's pretty? Hey, Amen. Hey, well, they, they had a lot of good preaching. Let me say something else before I hush. You know what else they had? They had, they had some praising, brother. They had some praising. You know how to have a good old-fashioned camp meeting? Some praising. The Bible said that God inhabits the praise of His people. You know why churches are dead? They won't praise God. Let me ask you people something here tonight. Are you saved? Anybody in here saved? Raise your hand. Listen, you have every right in the world scripturally to praise God. The Bible said you rejoice not because you've lived a holy life this week, not because you've, you've never sinned, not because you've given a lot of money, but because your name is in the book of life. That gives us the right authority on the Word of God to go, Woo! Hallelujah! Praise God! Thank you, Jesus! Walk the pews! Jump the benches! Run the aisles! I'll swing on the chandelier! I don't know if that one's going to hold me up or not. On these little chains right here. <laughs> I'm, I, I, if that would hold me up. Listen, you better be in the Spirit if you try that. Amen, brother. We got every right to run the aisles, jump the benches. You know, that's what the old people say. He jumped the benches. I've heard them old timey preachers say that. We, listen, our boys and girls need to see some of that old time religion. 
They need to see some of you grandmas shout. They need some old uh, grandma to wave that old hanky. We don't have a lot of grandmas here in our church. But some of you middle-aged ladies and younger ladies, they, there's kids coming up and need to see you worship God. Amen. They had some praising. Lord, I was talking about Deborah Parker a while ago. I seen somebody sling a songbook one night down there at Pensacola and hit her inside the head. Yeah. <laughs> that probably, we got it on, they got it on video. Liz up there singing, I should sing like this. You know, and she'd sing like that, you know, and about that time, people was running around shouting, shout, here come a song book over there, BAM! Right upside the head like that. We had one up there in one time, somebody slung a song book, and it went like it went, BAM! And hit the wall. And I mean, it popped like a gun going off. And it left a print of that song book right there. Somebody said, Lord, Brother Danny, you going to make them fix that? And I said, no, we're going to put a frame around that thing. <laughs> frame that baby, brother. For somebody praise God. Amen. You're right, brother. You're right. Amen. I seen a guy down there. They said down there uh, Pensacola one time, them boys bad run the aisle. Oh, Alan Ryman used to run the aisle with Samson, his son, when he was little. He was a little boy like that. And he was like that. And he was running the aisle. He banged his head into the post. <laughs> had them posts holding up you know, in that metal building. Banged these youngins' head against the post and just kept on shouting. Probably wasn't in the spirit, but you ain't in the spirit either when you're sitting there, you know, writing notes. Amen. Brother. Amen. Amen. Right. One of them boys down there one time, they used to shout and they'd take running fits and they'd go out the side door. They had a side door over here with them metal bars. You just push the door open like that, you know, and they'd run out in the yard and run back in the church, you know, and, you know, that, that, and it got to be a big thing if you got really filled with the spirit. You'd run. They said this boy one time preacher's preaching. He took off ninety miles an hour running there, and somebody had locked that door. <laughs> he didn't know it. <laughs> he went running over. Bam! <laughs> just walked over here and sat down like that right there. Man. He just ram right in that door. That probably ain't in the spirit. But listen, the Bible don't say you have to have goosebumps before you praise Him. But we need to have some praising. We need to have some praising. There's liberty when the Lord, when people start praising the Lord, it just loosens everything up, brother. It just loosens everything up. That's when it starts getting good. Hey, I'll tell you something else they had. They had some pain. I'll say this and I'm going to hush. I'm telling you, listen people, we can't be a bunch of tight wads and expect God to bless our account meeting. we got these men coming in here. We're going to take care of them, give them a good offering, and be good to them. I, I travel a lot. And buddy, I drive sometimes a thousand miles a week and barely get enough money to pay for my gas. Not counting my time and effort and stopping to eat and stuff like that. We're not going to do preachers like that. We ain't going to do it. We're going to take care of them. We're going to be good to them. And I think, I think you're a crook if you'll sit there and soak up the blessings now, the truth is, you're not supposed to look at this, but the truth is, you have had a better time in the last 45 minutes than you did when you went to the movies the other night. And look how much you paid to get in there. You, you felt more joy and life more and have a better feeling right now than what I've done in the last 40 minutes than you did when you went to wherever and played whatever and done whatever. And they would throw a dollar in the offering plate. And we've got a man driving 800 miles to come down here to Cranky Hunt, down here and back, and God have mercy on us if we throw a dollar in the offering plate. And then go out and spend 30 at the steakhouse. That ain't right, people. It ain't right to do people like that. Amen? Amen. That's right. They had some paying. Every, every person here that's able ought to write a good check and put it in the, in the church this week for our account meeting. Now, I say that for a bunch of reasons. You say, well, we got money in the bank. We sure do. And it's ready to all be spent. We're paying rent. We're pay- we, uh, Todd done us a good job on that grading. But we got a bunch of bills fixing to come in real quick. Got one in my Bible right now. Uh, and a bunch of money. We're spending a bunch of money trying to remodel that building, getting permits. As soon as we get our building permit, they just might as well cut a hole in the bottom of the bag and all the money's going to fall out. A parking lot, plumbing, heat and air conditioning, all of that. So it ain't going to kill us to give a good offering this week. A good offering. I don't understand how people can say, we'll go, we'll go out, where you want to go? We'll go to the steakhouse, we'll go here, we'll go there. And 